Hi folks, Frankie Paloma here. Now some time back I put up this video, Stefan Molyneux, The Life and the Legacy. But unfortunately, yep, taken down under the heading, hate speech. And I would say that was about right. Hate speech caused by someone you thought was quite cool at one time, to, pff, well, we all know. So I'll now briefly go over what I discussed on that video. <laughs> Minus the hate speech, of course. Oh, and I've got an extra segment that exposes him for what he really is. So let's begin. First of all, I'm not, I'm not right wing. <laughs> I'm not right wing. But it seems that the New York Times had a different point of view. By gosh, it's really, really uh, terrible. Three pictures of me in the Sunday edition for radicalizing some dude. Well, that dude he referred to was a guy called Caleb Kane who's got his own channel called Faraday Speaks, and he spoke out about Molyneux. When the media reports on me, they almost never quote me directly. I'm a cult leader, a white supremacist, far right, like all this kind of stuff, right? It's all garbage and it's all nonsense, but, uh, you know, they don't give me a whole bunch of accurate quote space, let's say. So at that point, I jumped in and said, I'll give you a quote. It was to do with a speech that Angela Merkel made when she said that refugees from Syria would eventually become Germans. And I played a clip from Molyneux's reaction to that. It's not that easy to blend when you don't look the same. So basically he was saying that someone's appearance could be a problem. So I asked if people with big noses are a problem. Or people with different eyes. Or maybe men with beards. Because he's got a beard. But he doesn't say what the problem is regarding people looking different. And we should never forget we've been down this road before. Now remember what he said earlier regarding accusations. I'm a cult leader, a white supremacist, far right. Now in my video, I recreated a scene where it looked like he was giving a speech to a very large room full of people. And it was my intention to demonstrate the direction he was going in, so he himself could understand why people would see him as far right. And I felt it was my duty to, to show what he was becoming. You know, like some crazy dictator. You do not have that right! Well, I do, Steph, but I'm not going to show the video, otherwise <laughs> I'm in trouble again. So let's just listen to the audio recording. Diversity is great when you have a rational methodology for resolving your disputes. Then we all love diversity. Mmm, sorry, you don't get diversity, you get a bloodbath! There are predators in the world! Our ancestors fought against tyranny and murder. And it's our job to keep it going. Oh, they can all come in, but then they'll become just like Germans. Really, really. It's not that easy to blend when you don't look the same. Pretty scary stuff, huh? Now, you can see by his tweets, he's quite obsessed with whiteness. But this is the important one, where he describes himself as the most influential modern philosopher. Which means he's fully aware that everything he says is going out to the whole world. To these kind of people, who are real Nazis, and he must know that. Securing the existence of our people and a future for white children. So it was my opinion that the New York Times got it right. I also spoke about what Molyneux does a lot, and that's clickbaiting. Now we've all seen them from time to time, and some of them are just, well, ridiculous. But, I suppose, the guy's got to make a living. But it's when he's dishonest, as in this case, then I feel I've got the right to expose it. He did an interview with this guy, and all he wanted to know was why Molyneux attracted so much criticism. The guy was very pleasant, and the conversation ended like this. Hey, uh, thanks, Stefan. I really appreciate your time. Um, and um, hopefully I'll talk to you again sometime soon. Appreciate it. Thanks so much. Thank you. Yeah, take a look at his face. But look at the views he got in just a few days. Over 94,000, proving that clickbaiting works. Now, I also had something to say about this. When the Pakistani rape gangs were preying upon tens and tens of thousands of little white British girls. And that's completely false. And they had a different figure a while back. So this is a million predominantly white girls groomed or raped by Pakistani men, mostly in the UK. Actually, while we're here, Let's check out the credibility of the woman who gave that information. 
She appeared on Molyneux's channel on a show entitled Hidden Rape of Europe. And it involves the number million. I wonder if you can uh, tell us uh, uh, how many girls, um, according to your calculations and statistics, are suffering from rape culture in the UK. And as I said at the time, he's keeping himself in the clear by stating that she's making the claim and not him. According to your calculations and statistics, and of course, this woman, who's an absolute nobody, gives him exactly what he wants. There's been over a million predominantly white girls that have been targeted, groomed, raped, trafficked, tortured. That is a shocking, shocking statistic, all the more so because... Because it's not true. Oh, and by the way, was she a victim of one of these gangs? I was raped when I was 15. They weren't Muslims who raped me, however... However, you went on another show and said you were raped by Muslims. Tonight, my guest is Tony Bugle. At age 15, you were violently raped by a Pakistani Muslim gang. And because of that... Yeah, because of that, you exposed yourself as a liar. And it makes me wonder how Malin you found her. Because I actually do some research, right? He probably did. And on a show entitled, Is Germany Headed for Civil War? He passed that on to a caller from Germany. A woman I was talking to the other day estimated about a million women have been targeted by these rape gangs and so on. Yeah, and so on and so on. Now back to something else I said on my banned video. It was to do with Molyneux's fear of joining his buddies who'd been kicked off social media. And of course he doesn't want to join them. So when a caller recently asked him if he'd like to go back to his home of birth, Ireland, this was his answer. Make sure I get some questions. Come to Ireland. Yeah, oh, could, uh, could be interesting. I would like, you know, it would be interesting to go to Ireland and revisit the places that I was born. So I put in a clip from three and a half years ago, and it told a different story. We wanted to visit Ireland, or it is known these days the Emerald Isle of Somalia. I will not. I can't go back. Yeah, as I said, Freedom Ain has gone through the car wash, and now come out more user-friendly. Now, I question why I put this photograph up on Twitter, but not this one, or this one, that features a couple of ladies-in-waiting, shall we say. And, of course, this one, a guy he equates to a god. Oops, and there's the hand of God. And I asked him why he never tackles Trump's lies. When your supporters last night were chanting, chanting, send her back, why didn't you stop them? Why didn't you ask them to stop saying that? Well, number one, I, I think I did. I started speaking very quickly. Very quickly. Very quickly. 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 And he didn't pick up on the lies from Trump's daughter-in-law. And it wasn't the whole crowd, it was a couple of people. A couple of people. And why has he never done a show with this title? Because we've all seen it. Respected all over the world. We have a really good man is going to be the Prime Minister of the UK now, Boris Johnson. Good man. He's tough and he's smart. I think Donald Trump is clearly out of his mind. Uh, they're saying Britain Trump, that they like me over there. What he's doing is playing the game. He'll get it done. Boris is good. A quite stupefying ignorance that makes him frankly unfit to hold the office of President of the United States. Donald Trump is a glorious supernova. I think the man is fiercely intelligent. This is the guy that wants to drop nuclear weapons into hurricanes. And how about this one? got a very beautiful letter from Kim Jong-un yesterday. It was delivered. This maniac from North Korea. Yeah, I'm all a news hero. Let's hope it's over quite soon. Yeah, I made it quite clear that he'll never, ever say anything negative about Trump. Despite the fact that he once promised this. I am responsible to you and to the truth. And I will continue to tell you the truth. So I decided to show the truth that kind of slipped his mind. Like all this obstruction stuff. And we got the guys who have already been locked up and the others who are awaiting trial. And let's not forget the ones who have resigned or been kicked out. Get them the hell out. Get them the hell out of here. Get them out. I uh, get them out. Get them out. Get them out of here. I uh, get them out. Oh, get them out. Oh, yeah. I suggested he spent less time playing Minecraft and concentrate on what he promised he would do. And by the way, there's more. 
Get him out. Get out of here. Get her out. Out. Get out. Out. Get him out. Get out of here. Get him out. Get him out of here. No, he's fully entrenched in the Trump camp. And that was very obvious right from the start when he gave him all this promotion. And what got my back up was this. So in my banned video, I asked the question, what would he say if the Obamas behaved like the Trumps? You know, regarding their private life. Like the Trumps did on the Howard Stern show. You're perfect. And what do you do? You go over there every night when you guys have sex? That's true. Great, great time. Every night you have sex? Mm-hmm. Even more. And what would he say about Obama if he went to the UK and gave out a speech like this? He's not a war hero. He's a war hero because he was captured. I like people who weren't captured. I could stand in the middle of Fifth Avenue and shoot somebody and I wouldn't lose voters. I got to know Putin uh, very well. I never met Putin. I don't know who Putin is. I moved on her like a bitch. I just start kissing them. I don't even wait. And when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Grab him by the pussy. We have to prime the pump. Have you heard that expression before? I came up with it a few days ago. I'm speaking with myself. Uh, number one, because I have a very good brain. Yeah, I'm all knew would have had a feast on that one. I then had something to say about his so-called documentary on California, which somehow jumped to this. And he rambled on about Stalin and Hitler and all that stuff. And it made me think. He's always gone on about the threat from brown people and usually stories from hundreds of years ago. But this stuff is relatively recent. And they're white. You know, that skin color that seems to give us superiority over all the others. And puts us way high up there in the IQ charts. Aren't we all proud to be white? And more recently, in living memory, another bunch of guys who were white. Who also committed the most horrific crimes. And now let's go over to Twitter and talk about racism. This is a shot of the protests in Hong Kong. And he put up this tweet, more or less making out there was no violence because these people have got a really high IQ. Completely forgetting there was another big march that was also very peaceful with people he considered to have a low IQ. And of course he had to get himself out there. You know, checking out the place uh, to give a more philosophical review of the situation. All paid for by his subscribers. I am responsible to you and to the truth, and I will continue to tell you the truth. So just one last part from my band video, and that's this one. With just one word, diversity. And it was about this kid, who happened to have a brownish complexion, taking some ice cream from a freezer in a grocery store. He eats some of it, then he puts it back. And that's it. Kind of giving the impression that he doesn't know the meaning of the word, diversity. How come he forgot all about these people? Especially this guy right there on his doorstep. Well, if you look closely, you'll get a clue from his name. Yep, he's a brown-skinned Muslim. Now here's the part that I spoke about at the beginning. About 10 minutes after I received the email from YouTube, my phone alerted me to another Molyneux tweet. And here it is. Just two words, white privilege. To your right there, you can see a screenshot. It shows two black girls beating their teacher. No explanation of what caused this, just the act itself. Now I searched for the original video, but I couldn't find it because as you can see, the quality there is quite bad. But you have to ask yourself the question, why did he choose this clip? Because when I started my search, my God, there was a whole variety of violence out there. After an internal investigation, Rosie was suspended for 10 days. That's right. Violence from the teacher towards the student. And here's another one. White teacher and a black kid. No, when it comes to violent girls, there's a whole variety out there. White, black, and a mixture of both. So why did he choose this one? Well, it's obvious. He's like a farmer. He plants the seeds, waits for the crop to grow, and then sells his produce. And before you know it, we're in the jungle. 
Not exactly the kind of comments you'd expect from a public intellectual. A man who's got the biggest philosophy show in the world. A show where his subscribers can watch, listen, and learn. But in saying that, maybe they are learning. And here's one where the person wasn't confident enough in literacy. But it doesn't matter, because Farmer Molyneux got a good crop. And by the way, I didn't see this anywhere. But even if he did reprimand some people, it gives you a pretty good idea of the kind of people he attracts. And don't hold your breath for a tribute to the Obama girls, because that's never going to happen. But I'll wind up with this. If you disagree with people's ideas, make better arguments. Well, I've got one. He claims to be an atheist, so why is he doing this stuff? Jesus had been baptized. He had received his approval from his heavenly father. Because to me, it would be like giving a talk on the, the life and times of the Loch Ness Monster. Another phenomenon we have absolutely no evidence of. And he's supposed to be a reason and evidence man. And another thing. Why does he keep up this pretend crying stuff? Because it's painfully obvious to everyone there's no tears on that cheek. And will we ever see the day when this crap gets taken down? Now standing at 72,000 views. No, there's something far wrong here, folks. The man who speaks out about terror attacks committed by brown people, but stays silent when it's a white guy. It says a lot, really, doesn't it? And when he uses a clip of a young kid stealing ice cream from a grocery store, a kind of tool to influence people against immigration, it's just crazy. And it leaves no doubt in my mind that he is a racist. Oh, hold on. Message coming in here. It says, Oh, Luke, a crappy little leftist calling someone a racist rather than making an argument. <laughs> I think I have made an argument, Steph. And what better way to finish than this? This show is going to succeed. I better have some good fucking reasons behind what I'm saying.